Hey everyone, welcome back to Tip of the Week. In this week's video, I want to share with you some quick tips for converting your landscape images into black and white using Photo Raw 2020. So inside Photo Raw here, I have this raw landscape image. And if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I haven't done anything to the shot yet, but we can tell that it's a little bit flat and it does need some TLC for sure. So my first tip, whenever you're converting your landscape images into black and white, is to process them first. And I don't mean edit them out, export them, and bring them back into Photo Raw. I mean set a base look. Don't take a raw image into the effects tab and start adding black and white filters onto it because they're all going to look really flat unless you have a really nice raw photograph. So especially with this raw photograph, we need to go into our tone and color pane first and develop that kind of foundational style and look in the shot. And then we can go and convert it to black and white using different filters. So with this particular photograph, I think what would look good is a camera profile switch. So I'm going to go to my camera profile menu here, and I'm going to go down to camera landscape. And the reason I want to go to camera landscape is because that's bringing out a lot of the colors within the shot, and it's also brightening it up a little bit so that it's not so flat and it's not so dull from the desaturated colors that were in the raw photo. So I'll click camera landscape here, and if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, does a great job of reviving the colors up, but it doesn't do anything to the contrast and we still sort of have a flat looking shot. So I'm going to go down to my exposure slider here. I'm going to pull this back a little bit and I'm just pulling it back to bring in a little bit more detail into this sky area up there. But I can see that I've dimmed this foreground area up. So I'm going to go down to my midtone slider, which is going to pull out a lot of these kind of middle grays here. And I'm just going to pull that up. That'll pull out some of those middle grays. I'll grab the shadow slider, pull that up a little bit as well. But now my image is looking too bright down there. So let's go to our contrast slider. We'll pull that up quite a bit and we'll add in a lot of contrast into our photograph and that's going to make it not look flat. So now we can head down to our white slider here and I'm just going to pull this up by holding down my J key and I'm just going to pull this up until I see just a little bit of true white right there. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, we've taken this photograph and we've set the base look now. And now we can go into the effects tab and start adding different black and white filters to convert it. So we'll go into the effects tab here. I'll add a filter. So my second tip for converting your landscape images into black and white is to try out different black and white filters. So inside Photo Raw, there's about three different filters that I like to use for black and whites and they are the black and white filter, the channel mixer filter, and the LUTs filter. So we'll start with the black and white filter and I'll give you guys a little bit better of an idea of how to use it and some tips and tricks on using it. So with the black and white filter, it's pretty easy. There's two different ways that you can convert your image into a black and white. There's color response and channel mixer. Color response is basically taking the different color tones in your shot and you can modify the brightness of them with these different sliders. So I can pull up all my reds, that'll brighten up the reds in the shot, or I can dim them down. So I'm actually going to dim these down quite a bit. Then I have a lot of yellows in my photograph. So if I pull up on my yellow slider, I can lighten these or darken them. I'm going to leave them probably at about nine. Then I can use my green slider to modify the greens in my shot. I don't have too many greens in here except for these ones over there. So I'll leave them at zero as well. Then I have a little bit of aqua and blue up here in my sky, so I can modify the aqua. I'm actually going to dim it down a little bit to bring a little bit more contrast into my sky area. And then I have the blue slider here, and I'm going to pull this down a little bit as well, just about right there. And that's going to bring a little bit more contrast again into that blue area within the sky. And that's how to use the color response conversion method. But if we wanted to use channel mixer, we could just switch that by going into this menu. I could click that here. And the channel mixer conversion method works by converting your image into a black and white, but it's going to take the specific colors that you choose on this hue slider and it's going to liven them up or add brightness into them. So you'll notice that it's about on the kind of yellows within my photograph. So if I pull this to the left, you can see it's starting to brighten up those reds in here because I'm pulling it to the red area on my hue. But if I pull this to the right on the blues, you can see it's brightening up all of those blues because my point right here on the hue 
slider right there is directly on top of the blues, so it's trying to force out and lighten those blues within my shot. I'm actually just going to head back over here to a nice yellow. About right there. Looks pretty good for the channel mixer. And also in the black and white, we have these three different areas we can modify as well. So we have tone, which will allow us to modify the actual tonalities in our shot. We can incorporate contrast, brightness, we can add whites, we can do a lot of different things with this black and white filter. So actually, I'm going to head down to this brightness slider, and I'm going to pull it back just a hair. And that's just going to bring some more detail into the sky area. And then I'm going to head down to my contrast. I'll add in a little bit of contrast into the shot. I'm going to leave my highlights alone for now, probably leave my shadows, well I can pull up my shadows just a hair, like that. And then I'm always, always tinkering with the black and whites in the black and white uh, filter. So using these two sliders right here, your whites and your blacks, you can really, really kind of fine tune your landscape shot. So I'm going to pull up on the whites a little bit. You never want to forget about the whites because they're going to add that contrast and that life into your shot. If you've lost all of your whites in your photo, um, it's going to look very dull. So always remember to incorporate some whites into your shot. And then I'll add some true black into my photograph. That's going to darken it up a little bit. And then I'll just pull up like that. That looks pretty good. And I'm actually going to leave the detail alone because I like to selectively apply detail, especially with black and white photographs. And then we can head down to the toner area. So inside the black and white filter, there's these three different areas that you can use to modify uh, the look of your black and white. And a lot of people don't use these areas, especially this toner area. So the toner area in here allows you to bring on a color cast or a split toning onto your monochromatic shot. So you just click in here and you can choose any of these different preset colors. I really like black T1 and any of these black T's and I really like these sepia ones. So I'll just click on this black T1 and now I can see that it's modified my highlights here and my shadows with these different colors. So if you're familiar with the split tone filter, you kind of have similar controls where you can modify the hue of the color, the amount to which it's applied to the highlights, you can modify the balance, so you can basically modify or have the uh, toner applying more of the shadow colors, and then you can have it either applying more of the shadow colors or more of the highlight colors, and you can kind of find a balance there with that slider. But I'm just going to leave this probably right there for now. And I actually might just turn it off for this particular edit. And then we have film grain. So down here you can actually bring in some film grain. Uh, I typically don't bring in any film grain to my landscapes. I'll, I'll leave that for portraits in my black and whites. But if you do want to add in film grain, just choose which film grain you want to apply. Um, we'll add 32 so we can see what's going on. And then you can modify the amount and the size. But that's a little bit too strong, so I'm just going to Go back to none right there so I don't have any film grain. That looks a lot better on my shot. And I actually really like what this is doing to this photograph. So I'm actually going to save this style in here by clicking on the more. I'm going to head down to save new style. And I'll just name this fave landscape. Sweet. So I'll just turn this off now. We'll add another filter. And we'll add the second filter that I like to use to convert my images into black and white, which is the channel mixer filter. And the channel mixer filter allows you to modify and control the different RGB channels within your image. Now there's a lot that goes into channel mixing, so I'm probably not going to dive too deep into how to use it for this particular tutorial, but to convert your images into black and white, I would just head down to these, this more area and use these different filters here. And the filters work kind of like the color response, where if you have a green filter right here, it's going to incorporate more bright or bright uh, luminance into the green, so they're going to kind of brighten up. And then the blue filter is going to brighten up the blues. Uh, we can see that infrared is actually going to darken the sky considerably. It's going to darken the blues a lot, and it's going to brighten up the yellows and the greens in your shot. Really, really cool for bright day landscapes. Uh, this one's a little bit too bright for an infrared, but then we have the red filter, which again is just brightening up the reds as it finds them in the shot. I'm just going to go over here to this green filter here for now. And this is just a quick way that I like to convert. If I have a landscape or a portrait and I really just want to incorporate black and white quickly, I go to the channel mixer every time, just click on more, and then I find the preset style I like, and then I'll just click on it, and I'm good to go. Then I start applying different filters to stylize and things like that. 
The next filter that I use to convert my images into black and white is the LUTs filter. And if you've watched any of the tutorials I've done in the past, you definitely know I love the LUTs uh, filter. It's an awesome filter for bringing in style really quickly. And we can just go into our category here, and there's a bunch of uh, preset black and whites in here already. So I can just hover down these, and I can kind of pick a preset style that I like under my shot. One that I really like for uh, landscapes is this titanium one. And you can always kind of bring in a, a local adjustment to the top. And also this fixer. Yep, fixer is a great one for landscapes as well. And the one thing I like about the LUTs is you can control the contrast of your black and white. So if you want to bring in more contrast or less, you can modify that here with this uh, contrast slider. And let's add a filter. And I'm actually going to use that black and white that I've made earlier. I'll just click Fave Landscape. And now I have that nice black and white that we were working with. So my third tip is to stylize with other filters or a local adjustment. But just by adding on the black and white, it could be a phenomenal photograph. But you can take a boring black and white photograph and really, really make it come to life by using different filters after the fact. The first filter that I like to apply to landscapes, especially if I'm converting them to black and white, is the curves filter. So I'll click on curves here. And if you're not familiar with the tone curve, it works by allowing you to modify the different tones within your shot based on this line here. So the left bottom point right there is your blacks. The top right point is your whites. And everything in between are your uh, tonal ranges. So we have the middle area, which is our mid-tones. We have our shadow tones down here. And then we have our kind of mid-tone highlights right there. And what I like to do with landscape photos is I like to play with the contrast by using this black point. So if I pull this to the right, I can add in contrast really quickly to my shot. And if I pull it upwards, I can bring in a fade to my shot really quickly. So if I want to make a moodier landscape shot, I could pull this up, and I could pull it to the right, and I could bring in a faded look that has a little bit of contrast, and now I have that sort of moodier look onto the frame. But for this particular landscape, I'm actually just going to pull this over to the right, just a hair to bring in some contrast. And then I'm going to go up to my shadow tones. I'm going to pull those back up a hair just like that. And so now if I turn off this curves filter, it's very subtle, but you can see it brings a lot of life into these lines in here and then adds a little bit more tonal contrast. And I can always go in here and kind of tinker with the look of it. Maybe add in a little bit more contrast. Sweet. I like that a lot. We'll leave that curves filter just like that. And then another filter I like to add on to my landscapes is the dynamic contrast filter. And typically with landscapes, I like to apply detail uh, after I've kind of built my foundation and styled with the black and white filter. So we'll add dynamic contrast here. And this is going to incorporate uh, detail into our photograph. But with black and whites, you really need to be careful with adding dynamic contrast onto your shot because in black and whites, we're always going to be so focused on the textures and details because we don't have any other colors in there to look at. We're really focused on the contrast. So for my last tip, I would recommend selectively applying detail onto your black and whites, whether it's using a gradient, whether it's using just a brush. Uh, definitely try to mask it on so that it's not applied everywhere. And you can really kind of fine tune where is sharp and where is a little bit dull in your shot by using different masking techniques. So with this dynamic contrast filter, I'm just going to leave this at natural, but I don't want this applied to the sky area. So a quick way to mask uh, dynamic contrast or any filter out of the sky quickly is just hit M on your keyboard, go up to your preset, make sure it's set to linear top. That's going to remove the filter from the top of your photograph. Then just drop it down on a horizon line. Oops, pull this up a little bit. And then if I turn this off and on now, I'll pull it up a little bit more so we can see. But now if I turn this off and on, it's strictly providing detail to the lower half of my shot. And it's not providing it anywhere else so that we're not looking at a crunched up sky area and a really sort of over-processed black and white. Really quick way to convert your images into black and white using different filters inside Photo Raw. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and stay updated with all new On One videos.